Hey there, here's Jan from Jovo and welcome to the fourth episode of our staging series for voice app development. This time I will show you how to use DynamoDB for your app stages that are hosted on AWS Lambda. But let's recap the last few episodes. So if we go back to our code and go to the app.json, we see that we already have quite some stuff in there. So let's, let's take a look at all of those. So um, in the first episode, we created some simple stages. We created a local stage and a dev stage, and then added um, different um, Alexa skill IDs for those. So we um, deployed them to different environments. So this is um, my uh, skill ID for my default environment, my personal account. And uh, this here is the skill ID for the Jovo dev account for the dev stage. So this was the first episode. In the second episode, what we did is uh, we added a, a language model override here. So um, we wanted to have different invocation names for different stages uh, so that we know uh, which uh, app we're currently talking to. So for example, my, my personal local development environment has the invocation name my test app local and the dev one has the invocation name my test app dev. And what we did in the third episode is uh, we deployed the dev environment uh, to AWS Lambda. So for local, we use the Jovo webhook, uh, which allows you to easily develop um, your voice app locally in your local computer. And um, now um, we have our um, dev stage hosted on AWS Lambda so that we can share it with other people and so on. And what we haven't uh, talked about yet is databases. So uh, for example, um, for local development, um, Jovo uses um, a file-based uh, database, uh, which makes it very easy to prototype locally. It's, uh, it's just stored in a DB folder uh, and it's, uh, everything is stored in a db.json. So right now it's empty, I just uh, deleted everything, but um, let's take a look. So I've been running um, the, the Jovo webhook with a Jovo run and uh, I'm using the, the local development stage now. So let's try it out. Open my test app local. Hello world. What's your name? My name is Jonathan. Hey Jonathan, nice to meet you. So as you can see, the, the good thing about the file persistence uh, database that we use is that you can immediately see everything that's, um, that's stored in there. Um, so we have some, um, some default data, you can, um, you can toggle that, so you can actually choose to use that or not. Um, so um, some metadata, some context um, that can help you to understand which, um, which um, part of the conversation the, the user is currently in. And, uh, and some user data that we can then use to store stuff. Um, and the, the primary key is my user ID. Um, so the thing is file-based um, databases don't work on AWS Lambda, so you can't write in a file. So usually people use DynamoDB. And um, if we go back to the Jovo docs, let's take a look here. So we have database integrations um, here and um, we offer currently offer a file DB and DynamoDB and to add DynamoDB you usually add the following to to your config file so if you go to um, the app.json uh, the app.js the app logic we have config here so right now logging is set to true and um, we usually would do something like this like add a database um, with a type DynamoDB, and then we would add the table name, which could be stuff like stage test dev, for example. Right now, people that for local development, we always would have to like comment that out, for example, then do Jovo um, run again and restart your server and try that out. And so it's very difficult to use different table names and different types of databases for different stages. And for this, um, it, we added something for our staging um, called config overrides. So if we go back to the docs and go to um, app configuration and app.json, um, you can find config overrides here. So you can actually um, add uh, a config element to your stage and then define certain things. So for example, this here. 
um, and we can actually do that. So let's get rid of this here in the config and go into our app.json. So in our dev environment, we can add this and let's add it here. So we now have, um, we, we overwrite the config and then we can add like anything that can be added to the config uh, in our app.js. So if we go um, back here, um, DynamoDB is added and we can add something like stage test dev as a table name, for example. Okay, nice. So, um, and that should work. And if we now, um, if we now deploy it, I go to our terminal and deploy it by, do, by doing jovo deploy stage dev and then target Lambda. So we only want to upload it to, to Lambda. We don't want to update the skill because we didn't do any changes to it. So let's just upload it to Lambda. And while we're doing that, let's take a look what we need as well. So there's um, a few more things that we need. So um, we need to give our Lambda function the permissions to write into DynamoDB and to create a table. So the Jovo framework will automatically create a table for you. And so you can do that in services and then IAM. So you can define a user role. So each Lambda needs a user role. For example, this one here has um, a Jovo dev role. And I added a new policy for the DynamoDB permissions that I attached to this role. So if we go to IAM management, you can see roles here. I, add, I selected the Jovo dev role and here a policy called DynamoDB. You could also attach other policies. So for example, you could also attach DynamoDB full access uh, as well, which would give you admin access to like all DynamoDB um, features. Uh, which I think it's it's better to just use the ones that are actually needed. So um, we just added um, get item, create table, and put item. And that's actually all we need for the current version of um, the database integration with Jovo. Okay, so let's see if the deployment worked. Deployment is completed, so let's refresh. Okay, so if we go to app.json, you can see that it worked. And so there's one more thing that we need to add. So right now, the Lambda code doesn't really know which stage it is currently in. So we need to specify the stage there in the environment variables. Right now, the default stage of the app.json is local. Of course, we could also um, add this one here, like update it to def, um, but um, I think it's a better option to go into the environment variables here, define stage and dev, and it will use that. And let's save it. Okay, so and if I now run test, so I currently don't have a DynamoDB table. And if I now run test, it should create the DynamoDB table if I set the permissions correctly. Okay, so it returned the right message. If I refresh DynamoDB here, you can see that now the table stage test def was added. And let's take a look. And nothing is saved because it's uh, the, in the first interaction the table is created. So if I test again and then do refresh, and there it is. So here you can see all the information. And as you can already see that um, like this can get quite tedious to update this. So I strongly recommend uh, you to um, stick to local development and, uh, and debug with the file persistence database and only use DynamoDB when really hosting it on AWS Lambda um, for testing it with other people and for uh, production. Um, and that's it. And this is how you can use different um, database types um, for different stages, have different table names. And uh, I mean, this is still uh, something, uh, there's a lot of hard-coded stuff here in the app.json. And this is why in the next video, I will show you how to um, use environment variables, uh, which you can define in your app.json and then specify in your Lambda function or in a .env file, um, similar to what we just did uh, with our stage 
environment variable here. And uh, yes, I will show you this in the next episode. See you soon. Also, thanks a lot for uh, giving us 400 stars on GitHub. Um, we're very happy uh, about that. Uh, let us know if you have any, any more questions and we appreciate any support. Thanks a lot.